Obviously, uh, there's been a lot going on with feed-in tariffs uh, across various countries. I mean, what are, what are, what's the real challenges we're seeing with the, with, with the industry right now? Yeah, the big, biggest challenge that we see right now is the perception of solar still being expensive, which is not the case any longer. Yeah? Germany has taken the lead in installation of solar power, and by that, they have made solar power cheap, much cheaper than most people believe. Yeah. And, and, and this, is, this obviously isn't just a, an issue for, for Germany, even though everyone would assume, well, everyone knows solar in Germany being, it's got the largest installed base. But, you know, this is also true, say, for in, in the UK, I'm assuming, the, the challenges of people understanding. The, the challenge is universal, that's true. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. If you ask someone in the UK or Germany even, also in other countries, um, politicians and also public, uh, I mean, general people, they believe solar is too expensive. But in fact, to give you a figure, yeah, to replace 10% of a country's um, energy demand would cost only three pounds per individual per year for 10%. Is that too expensive? I don't perceive so. Uh, well, you make an interesting point because obviously uh, we, we've had in Germany the decision by uh, the current coalition government to, um, uh, to phase out nuclear. Uh, and obviously that has to be uh, replaced, not necessarily all with renewables, but it's certainly uh, um, an impact because of the Fukushima disaster. Do you see that uh, having any real long-term benefits for solar or... Uh, is, is solar going to be um, sort of ignored in that, in that move to actually replace that nuclear power? Within Germany it's uh, quite funny because uh, the targets for renewable energy have not been changed after Fukushima. Yeah? The government decided to phase out nuclear power but they did not decide to increase their targets to introduce new, uh, renewable energy. Um, this is a mistake in my view. In general, we definitely believe that solar will have a major, will play a major role in the supply of energy to the world's demand in future. And in the long run, definitely, we will show how cheap we are. I, I told you one figure, which is very important to know for the people, three pounds per person per year to replace 10% of the energy demand of any country. That's not expensive, and it's getting cheaper along the years anyway. Yeah? But is there... Um uh, and there also seems to be a misconception or, or just an unknown aspect is that people are looking long term about, oh, it's going to take a long time to replace that, that uh, kilowatt hours, uh, a trillion kilowatt hours from nuclear. But we know that, as, and you know as a project developer, how quickly you can add gigawatts or, uh, you know, in, into the grid. Is, is that another a aspect? People don't realize how quickly solar can replace any t other type of energy. Yeah, apart from other advantages, solar can be done very quickly and also it is scalable. You can, you can build solar plants at any scale you just need, right? And, and I'm assuming as well, you know, as we know with nuclear, we know with wind, they're limited to where they can go because they, they need the, the right infrastructure and right conditions. Mm -hmm. Solar can go anywhere, I'm assuming, you, you, as far as you're concerned. Anywhere south of the polar circle. <laughs> right. Yes, that's true. Well, uh, uh, changing subjects for a minute, obviously um, with the UK market, and, and you're involved in the UK market, we've had the, the feed-in tariff review. It looks like uh, we're going to be limited to only uh, uh, residential rooftop. How, how does that impact you and, uh, and what do you think of the UK market? Obviously politicians in UK have not understood what is the cheapest way to introduce PV, right? You need a higher feed-in tariff for, for residential markets and smaller rooftops than you need for larger rooftops and free field. Yeah? Uh, it's about 30% more expensive. So if you want to replace conventional power with renewable power, you normally should go for the cheapest way. Yeah? And um, so maybe it's a perception that PV needs a lot of space, but that is also not the case. Yeah? If you replace, again, 10% uh, of a country's demand, it would cover maybe 0.3% of the agricultural land. Yeah? So the land usage is not a limit. 
Uh, obviously, people, at your, your, uh, I fully understand what you're saying. People have also had the perception that we're talking about agricultural land that will be used for human food consumption. I think there was a recent study that highlighted that uh, the majority of, uh, 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 of ag agricultural land is actually, in Germany, was used for feedstock. It's used for feedstock, and in Germany, for example, it's also used for, uh, for biopower. Yeah? Um, it's maybe 20% of the agricultural land. We only need less than half a percent to, again, produce 10% of the energy demand in the country. So this is not an argument, in my view. Well, my final question for you, Lars, is um, obviously as a, a major provider of, of PV solutions, um, I wanted to understand your position regarding being technology agnostic. I mean, what does that really mean for a, for a company like yourselves? Well, our company makes projects, produces projects, not products. So we can use any type of component uh, for our projects. So we have a solution, uh, thin film modules or crystalline modules, different type of inverters, whatever. We know the way how to get to the cheapest point. And that's why we believe we can be a good consultant to Greg Barker and his people to know what is possible and what is not possible any longer. So I invite Greg Barker to come to us or me to come to him and explain really what is the limit where we can go and how cheap it is today and tomorrow.